Hi everyone, it's Gus from Apply My Life Up. In this video, I will be doing a review on the Pi Top, a cool do-it-yourself laptop built for use with the Raspberry Pi. After pre-ordering the Pi Top about six months ago, and after a few delays, I finally received it in the mail just a few weeks ago. If you're interested in this device, hopefully this review will help you understand everything there is to know about the device. Firstly, I am going to go through the hardware of the kit, and some of the upsides and downsides of the components you get. The keyboard that comes with the Pi Top is available in both US and EU layouts, so you're able to get the one that you're most comfortable with. The keyboard itself is a very decent size, but will take a bit of getting used to. I found the keys to be quite stiff, so I needed to push on them quite a bit for the key press to register. Another thing I didn't really like about the keyboard is the lack of any indicator lights. For example, you will need to start typing to see if cap locks has been pressed, which is a slight annoyance to me. The trackpad for the Pi Top is located to the right of the keyboard and it is an okay size, but if it was any smaller it would be very painful to use. On a good note though, it is really responsive and is probably one of the best trackpads I've used with the Raspberry Pi. The trackpad buttons that represent the right and the left mouse buttons are easy to press and give quite a loud click. This might be a bit too loud for some people, but isn't a huge issue for me. As with any laptop, the battery is one of the most important items, because without it, basically you just have a small desktop computer. The battery in this Raspberry Pi laptop lasts for ages. I have tested it out a couple times now and it will last on average between 8 to 12 hours, depending on how heavily you're using it. This is great if you need a device that will last a long time on battery. One of the downsides of the battery, however, is that it isn't removable. It is still shut into the base of the case of the laptop, which is pretty disappointing as it makes replacing the battery a lot harder in the future. It is hard to know how long the battery will last, but hopefully by the time it starts to die, PyTop will have an easy and affordable way to get a replacement. The casing of the laptop is actually pretty decent, the plastics are pretty sturdy and didn't appear to have any major defects. The screen that you get is 13.3 inches big and has a 1366 by 768 resolution. The overall design of the screen is a pretty good quality and I believe the resolution is sufficient for the size of the screen. You will also find that you won't suffer from too much glare as it also has an anti-glare finish. You will find that the screen makes use of your HDMI port, freeing up the DSi port if you wish to use it for something else. The access to the peripheral slots on the Raspberry Pi is probably one of the biggest downsides of the Pi Top. Unfortunately, due to the design of the case, you can only easily access one port. To use the rest, you'll need to remove the cover that covers the Pi and the PCB hub and connect them up. The same goes with the Ethernet port where you will need to insert the cord and have it come out the side hole. Another downside, there is no speaker for this laptop, so you will need to connect headphones or hook up your own speakers to the Pi. This is yet another cord that will need to come out the side of the Raspberry Pi laptop. Whilst the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins are used for the PCB hub, you will also find that the PCB hub has GPIO pins that you can break out from. However, no breadboard or breakout kit comes with the kit, so these will need to be purchased separately. The process of assembling the Pi Top together is relatively easy. It comes with instructions on how to assemble the laptop, however, sometimes the instructions can be a little hard to understand. If you want to see all the parts and how to put it together then be sure to check out my video on the Pi Top unboxing and assembly. The overall design of the device is quite nice. The ability to interchange microcomputer boards with others such as BeagleBones, older Pies and possibly newer Pies if they keep to the same size. However, there are also a few things that I didn't like such as the sealed battery unit, the keyboard quality, access to peripheral slots and of course no speaker. Next I'm taking a look at the Pi Top OS. 
This is the operating system that comes bundled with the PyTop kit. It's also very important to remember that if you don't actually like this OS, you can just simply change the many other variations available. The process of getting the operating system up and going couldn't be easier. All you need to do is have a micro SD card inserted into your Pi and simply turn it on. Once that's booted up, you'll be presented with a series of questions that will help with setting up the software correctly, such as keyboard layout and Wi-Fi connection. Once you have done the initial setup, you'll be presented with a screen saying you need to update. Unfortunately for me, this got stuck on connecting and wouldn't proceed. After doing a bit of research, I found a workaround. Before proceeding, you can either enter as a guest or set up your own account. However, by default, create a new user is hidden. To view it, you will need to press the cog in the lower right corner. Once you are logged in, go to the terminal and enter the following lines. sudo su curl dash sl https forward slash forward slash www.pi dash top dot com slash download slash patch one space vertical bar sudo bash Dash. This should run without any errors and after this your PyTop should now be updating correctly. Once you have done this, you're free to do whatever you'd like on the PyTop. Now I'll go into some of the features you can expect in the PyTop OS and anything else such as performance and bugs. One of the main selling points of the PyTop OS is the Seed Universe. This is an educational game where you learn how to code robots and build circuits and do other stuff in a game-like world. There seems to be a lot to this game and is certainly worth looking into, especially if you're interested in learning more about coding and circuitry. You also have all the standard applications you expect on the Pi, such as Python, Chromium, the Pi Store, Minecraft, and much more. At the writing of this PyTop review, there is still quite a few bugs in the PyTop OS. One bug in particular had the desktop UI crash whenever I tried to do something. A simple restart fixed it, but it was still quite annoying. You can expect that most of these bugs will be fixed in the very near future. The performance of the operating system seems to be pretty decent. You can expect to see more and more updates for the operating system as they have another system coming out that makes use of it. As I mentioned earlier, if you don't like it, you can revert to the many other operating systems currently available for the Pi. You can find the PyTop for sale for $299.99 US dollars with the Raspberry Pi or $269.99 US dollars again without the Pi included. Now when you compare this to a Chromebook for example, it might come across as a bit expensive. Chromebooks vary from 150 US dollars upwards. Personally, if all I wanted to do was document work and internet browsing, the Chromebook would probably be a better buy. However, if I wanted a device that I can continue to upgrade, customize and learn from, then the PyTop is probably a better choice, despite the price. If the PyTop is out of your price range, then you should take a look at the Cano Kit. This too has lots of educational features and is quite a good Raspberry Pi kit. Be sure to check out my review on the Cano Kit as I go through all the pros and the cons of the kit. Overall, the PyTop is a pretty decent laptop, but has a few cons that might put you off from picking one up. I will just quickly list the overall pros and cons of the device. So for the pros, it's lightweight, modular, the build quality is good, very stylish, battery life, and is an all-in-one package. The cons, the battery is not removable, there's only one USB port easily accessible from the side port, no speaker, the Ethernet port isn't easily accessible, the keyboard is a bit clunky, and of course the price. Now I hope this PyTop review has helped shed some light on this do-it-yourself Raspberry Pi laptop. If you have any thoughts or I've missed something or anything else then be sure to drop a comment below or over at PyMyLifeUp.com. Until next time, have a good one. Want more information on the PyTop? Then be sure to check out my full review over at PyMyLifeUp.com. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with the latest and greatest projects, guides and much more.